If you're just joining us right now, we are, uh, yeah, we talking to educators, man. We talking to black educators right now. People that who are uh, out here, who have our children's uh, best interest in mind. Uh, up next, Q Butter, where you at? I don't see. Oh, there you go. Okay. We got another brother from Brooklyn. Okay. We had the OG, my uh, father-in-law, A.B. Whitfield. Um, but now we bringing in some of the young guns. We're going to pull the young guns out right about now. Uh, so now here's another brother from Brooklyn who, uh, man, I, I, I guess we just met on IG and, and a lot of people, uh, have had great things to say about this young brother. And so we're going to bring him up right now and let him tell us about his program, how he got started and, uh, what he's got going on. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the Godcast, my man, Q Butter. You like that introduction, brother? Yeah, that was fire. That was fire. We're going to chop that one up. Yeah, and see, you know, now that my uh, father, not that he could see me, and not that it matters because it's legal in New York State, but, uh, you know, I feel like with Q, but I could light the L up. And, uh, what's good, my brother? Yo, I'm here, King. Yo, shout out to your, your father-in-law, man. I was taking notes. Yo, man, he, he, he definitely... The, the, that business move he did with, with getting a loan and it, and putting the gamble against it, saying like, "Look, at the end of the day, you can get the building." Right, you'll just have a renovated building. If I fuck yeah. up, then you'll just have a renovated building. That's all. That's literally how I do my studios, man. Like that's. And he's I, been in that building now for about twenty years. Big ass building. You can see it off of uh, Atlantic Avenue. You know what I mean? When you're going down Atlantic Avenue and all that type of shit. Um. But tell the people, because you don't, you know, i am be honest, when I look at you, you don't look like the typical uh, educator of children. Yeah. You got fronts in your mouth. You got dreads and shit like that. You got your fucking cool ass shades on. Let me see what I'm saying, shades. Um, so, yeah, tell me, tell me, what's your story, brother? How'd you, how'd you get into this? I always wanted to educate, uh, uh, pretty much when I was in high school and regular school education, the system didn't make sense to me. I learned, I don't even know what I learned in, in public school for the most part. I learned almost everything from my father, people in the community. Um, you know, my, my, my experience in, in public school was largely troublesome, you know, just about socializing, um, the cultural differences between the teachers and myself and the people in the building was blatantly, you know, blatantly established and well known that you know we're different and for me I just like you know it just was something that I wanted to do and I wasn't I didn't know when I was how I was going to do it and as I you know developed and I, and I created Zyx and the team I have who created Zyx was always founded on trying to find a way to empower our community and education has always been the premise to me that to which we're supposed to be building our you know the ability to empower our community also and um, yo, somebody get the door. <laughs> and as I um the doorbell going off in the background. So, you know, I'm 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 summarizing, but pretty much I thought I was homeschooling my children and I did a video about churches and how they're wasting space, you know, right in the same area, East New York. Hang on, slow down. You were homeschooling your children. What made you feel like you were qualified to homeschool your children? Well, the qualifications in New York is just based on being a parent. Like I learned that early on. I remember my fourth grade teacher said that to my, my mother, you know, what qualifies you to be a teacher? And my mother said, I'm his mother. My job, mm. my job is to teach him. That's my job. And if I don't teach him and get him to a certain level, I got to deal with you. And if you don't do it right, you got to deal with me. And legally in New York, you just need, you know, there is no educational standards for which a parent has to have. To um, educate the child. Now, for me, education wise, I did go to school for astrophysics. I dropped out at like 100 credits. Um, I was in the astronomy program, the NASA program with um, uh, um, with Neil, everybody knows Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. But it would many be glad you dropped out of that. You said be glad? Yeah, they lying to you. Go ahead. Um, well, you know, that's that's 
it wasn't about lying. That's that's I always wanted to pursue it, like astronomy and astrophysics and engineering. And you know, that's something my pops passed down to me. He was a you know inventor. And when I was in school, my go my focus on black empowerment and what I saw in the establishments of schools didn't align together. And I didn't see any way for them to align together. And I was I was teaching at Brooklyn College. I had a music program I was running out of there. A lot of people know the Brooklyn running program out of there. I got a music studio. Everybody knows my music studio. So at the time I was teaching at Brooklyn College. Um, and so the white folks I was there with, like my methodologies was not in tune with them. And they were pushing a lot of their own ideologies on the children that me as a person who's about black empowerment, I cannot align with, you know. But most people know about homosexuality. That's one thing. But there's a lot of other things that they're pushing on the children that I just I'm not cool with. And like one, the educational standards of, of, of 33% to graduate or 33% to pass the test, the fact that they're not exposing children to the right cultural understandings of the of the each subject, the 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 focus on the discipline and the need for our community to have certain master, mastery of crafts in our community. White people don't understand why that is so important. There's no reason for a white person to understand that. That's for us to be able to sit there and say to a black child, if you don't get your shit together, our community is not gonna be able to take care of yourself. And you gotta be able to look that black child in the face and understand where they are in their life and actually help them get to that space. That's not something white people should even be trying to understand. And I knew that from regular school. And when I was in that program, I saw that. And when I got laid off, the, the, the white dude at the time was like, yo, you know, you should start your own program. And that was crazy. You know, you get laid off from a job and the dude is telling you to start your own version of the job. And I looked at him. I'm like, you know what? And my wife, my queen is pregnant. My wife is pregnant. And I get laid off right now. Whatever. Make it happen. So like, fast forwarding, uh, when I have my first son, I'm like, yo, I'm, all, I'm, I'm not, I can't put my child in the regular school system. I'm, I'm extremely pro-black. You know, one difference, like, one thing I do align with with Umar Johnson, and I know it's a difference between many other educators is that our goals with Black empowerment put us in a space where we can't deal with certain people. Even down to, like, even with me, like, I only do media like this. I don't do white media. I don't interview a white, I don't talk to white folks. There's no reason to have a discussion about anything with white folks unless I'm buying something from them or mm. getting something I need from them. But when it comes to black empowerment, there's, there's no reason to have that conversation. So I just, that, and that's something that educators, it's hard to do. But me as an entrepreneur being, you know, built on myself, that's something that I'm founded on. Like you gotta be able to stand up on your square and this is what you gotta do. And of course, Lord Jamal, let's not forget, I'm a baby of New York, man. What changed my life was being a, learning about five percenters, Nas, learning about Wu-Tang. And when the first book I read, and the only damn near book I read, I read like two books. It was a five percent book and the Spider-Man book till I was like 18. Mm. And so I knew, and my father's knowledge and what I was learning about the five percenters, like that was very powerful for me, like the foundation. You're not supposed to be learning from white folks. You got to take care of yourself. You're supposed to know your knowledge. It built a whole different feeling. Like when, when they hear us throw the word God around, they don't know how important that was. And like, especially me looking up to your generation and uh, and the immediate one above mine, like, yo, nah, like that has power. You know, we don't have to be Christians. You know, we can do for ourselves and we're supposed to do for ourselves. And it's, And hearing those leaders at the time say this, and then seeing my father be an inventor, but at the same time, not really, you know, take on education on his own for me was kind of confusing. So I'm like, you know what? I just need to do this for myself. So there was no way I could put my son in a white institution or a white owned institution ran by black people. It's just, it was never going to happen, you know? So, so first of all, real quick, how old are you right now? 39, 39. How old were you when you took on this undertaking? 30. Six, thirty. No, 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 no. I'm the undertaking of Zyx. That was at twenty. I, but empowering the community. That's that's been since I was like twenty four years old. I got in a lot of trouble. I had a murder case. I beat my murder case and changed my life. And ever since then, at like twenty four years old, I was just like focused on building up the community. And any opportunity I had to express that, I would take that. Whether it be you know working in some building or doing some nonprofit stuff or doing the community. Now, when I ended up in Brownsville, where I'm at now, 
And this is important because just like the gentleman you had your elder, it's important that that class of men pass on and take care of the next generation. And so I was, like I said, at Mom Studio, you know that song Big Trip? Which one? Big Trip by Fabio. Yeah. We recorded that in our studio. You see what I mean? He said my name in the beginning and stuff. So like, okay. that's, our, that's our studio stuff. I was in a different location before this and I was at war with the landlord. I'm talking about like, it was about to be guns called. People was about, it was really bad. It was a year just of like, terrible, terrible. And I started doing community events. I started doing an event called Let's Build and Educate Us. And that was like my therapy because I spent all my money on the studio and I started doing community events and I met an Israelite brother who introduced me to the owner of this building here. And he saw me speak and he was like, yo, Q, I want you to take my space. I want you to put a studio on my space and you're going to change the world in my building. Like literally that's what he said to me when he met me. He's like, you're going to change the world in my building. Literally brought me here so you don't got to pay rent for the first two months. Get mm. your studio right. I was doing delivery work. He said, quit that job. Get rid of that ugly ass truck. Just, just get Uber. Like really nurtured. And then his wife is a principal. And she really just took on the next step. Was like, yo, I love what you're doing. I love what you're about the community. So they gave me the first floor. And I, I, I was like, yo, I'm going to put my, I'm going to do a homeschooling center in here. Mm. I'm going to cut one room up. And at the time I was doing a lot of videos talking about churches waste space. You know, you just go up Thomas Boylan, you go up Rockaway, you go up Pennsylvania. There's nothing but closed churches. And I'm like, yo, if you gave me that space, I could do wonders. The same way your, your, your stepfather said, yo, just give me, just give me a, give me a freaking thing in the back. Yep. Like if you really about Three little it, trailers in the back of the church. Give me a chair in the back of the church with no lights. I, I, I'll get lights running. Like, I love that. And so he gave me this. He didn't even tell the story about getting the desks and all that for free, going to, uh, the board of education and get the desk that they throw out and shit like that and, and just collecting these shits from the back of schools and shit like that. Bro, I'm talking about I done dug in the garbage. I didn't have people donate stuff. I built this. So when we talk about building, I take it a little differently. Like I built this wall. It's like I built for real, for real. Yeah, I, I built I for it for real. All the renovations on the first floor myself. Mm. That's what started. Just gotta give you a round of applause. That's what started my GoFundMe. I was putting this wall up and I was doing it live. And it's funny because one of my first students really put me on a Umar Johnson. He was like, yo, Q, yo, you black and you pro-black, but you not conscious pro-black. And I'm like, yo, bro, like I done had you working since you were 17. I taught you about this, saved your life, got you here. I'm not pro-black. Oh, who's this Umar Johnson you talking about? And when I heard him talk and this different stuff, I just saw the lack of business acumen at the time. And I was like, whatever. And so when I went live with this, this lady, shout out Marie, I never forget it. She's like, yo, make a GoFundMe. I want to help you. It's not fair. We want to help you. We want to support you. And that's literally how the GoFundMe started. And then I did an interview. Shout out to Sinetta. Sinetta really put the buzz on the chart for me. Like, he pulled me up and did an interview. And people started donating. And parents started coming in. And it literally grew from that room to the whole floor. And it went from just my sons and like four other children to we have a goal. We're cruising about like 160 to 170 students around the country. We're in over 40. So wait, tell me the name of your of your uh school, your organization, and also how can people, you know, get in the contact Zyx, and donate and all that. The Zyx Institute. That's a black word too. So every time somebody says Zyx, you're saying a word made by a black person. Just Spell it for the people. X Y A Y X. That's the Zyx Institute. You might see Zyx Studios and Zyx Printing. We're a movement, and we have a bunch of different things, and everything's underneath our movement. The institute is part of the movement. We have a you have a main uh, like website, Zyx. The what? Zyx Institute. So the institute is the Zyx Institute. Is it the Zyx Institute or just Zyx Institute? The Zyx Institute. Okay, got it. I just want to put it up on the screen for the people. And then for the nonprofit, we have Zyx the Movement, which is the mother nonprofit. We're not a school. We're an institute and we provide the service to parents who are homeschooled. In New York City, I'm not like no offense to your step. Um, like, but when we make schools in New York, the laws are like, not to say like you have to include people. And for me, I don't want to include nobody but black folk. And if I do choose to sue somebody, it's not because you told me to do it. I chose to bring that person in here. Like, we only want to deal with black people. I don't really give a damn about nobody else but black people. And that's all I want to see get fixed on right now. That's the focus. 
that is straight like that. And so my institute is only for people who are of that mind state. And I think the the, pla- the, the panel you have is so diverse, it's beautiful because you have a regular school that's ran by a black person. You have a super pro black school. Then you have an independent school, but I believe the brother is more like, he's more of American mindset where he's just like trying to build a school for the youth that's more modern and urbanized, but it's from an American set. I don't really fuck with American politics. I don't really give a damn about the government. Everything we teach, like my kids, my students learn different caliber sides. We have Crystal Muhammad from the Black Panther Party teaches with us. Mm. BTX teaches with us. We have, you know, I'm trying to get Cynthia G to teach with us. Like everything we do, like is straight black empowerment. The curriculum I created is is, is STEM based, African centered. Every piece of it is black. Like every piece of the curriculum is about black empowerment. Like not one piece. And so like, that's why I dress like this and keep it like that. Because when the conversation starts, like I know my curriculum backwards and forwards. I know every nut in school and both in my institute. We're about to be expanding into Atlanta. We got two locations in Brooklyn. We're now in Best Style. As soon as the summer hits, we're going to be bringing programs to Best Style. We in Brownsville. And this is all through the support of people like yourself in the community. And so, you know, I, I love it. Well, yo, you know, hats off, brother. You definitely doing your thing. Um, yeah, we see the work and 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 um, keep that shit going, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> keep it going because it's all about, um, you know, when I first got knowledge, you know, I read books like uh, Message to the Black Man and Supreme Wisdom and and one of the resounding things in those books was do for self, do for self, you know? And, you know, a lot of times we ask, we always have our hand out asking somebody, oh, can you make the schools better? Can you do this for me? Can you do that? Can you build the shit for me? Like, you're an example of doing for self. Like, I feel like that for me is the, is the theme here you know what i mean doing for self in order to teach the seeds teach the future you know and being that example that we need to see in our community so i thank you for that brother and of course we will support you and you got things going on you know what i mean that you need to promote just let us know and you know we're here bro not definitely if you in atlanta hit us up you know if you're a stem teacher if you, you know, if you do electrical engineering, if you do um, mechanisms and structures, if you do environmental sciences, this year I'm going to be overhauling our program a whole lot. I want to push environmental sciences a lot more from the black perspective. I'm, I'm all about science, like obsessively. And I'm, I'm, every room is a science lab we have, and every child has to get science all the way down. Shout out to Irene Yvette. You know, she's also a teacher here. She's our social studies teacher. And the curriculum and the time we put into making sure that the curriculum is ever evolving and up to the time so that way the children can get as much information as possible to get them to be in a competitive space so that way we can quantifiably predict where our community is growing. You know, that's one thing I hear with a lot of black leaders, like they want to say what, what their plans are, but you can't quantify their plans, you know, in the times we're in, if you, if you can educate someone over a certain period of time, that that gives you an ability to predict what you can do with that person and if we don't have enough people who are looking at the 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 platforms we have to develop the minds and and increase the capacity within our community we're not really talking about leadership and development and for me that's what it's about you know it is a there's a there's a program you have to do to create your nonprofit in new york to formalize it and it's about capacity development and when i hear a lot of leaders talk unfortunately they lack well we want to inspire more leaders to promote capacity development. We need our community to be actually able to do stuff. My goal is making sure all of my students can recognize the components on the circuit. They can they can get down and understand the different types of code. A lot of people say, oh, coding, coding, coding. They don't know the different types of code. They don't know what type of structures they're building. They don't know the importance of the sciences. They don't even know the reason why social studies is important. They're like, oh, my child learning social studies. You know, the purpose of social studies is to develop someone who is able to be, like the brother said, can contribute to society in a productive manner. Now, if you have a white person teaching a black child, how can that child be productive for the black community? It only can come from black people who understand that that child is the key to developing the future capacity for our community. And it's an exponential growth. If we're not increasing anybody's abilities, 
daily, we're not increasing anything. And, and, and if you don't do, if you do the same thing every day, you don't increase your potential. And so for our community, education is the key to doing that. Ladies and gentlemen, Q Butter for the Godcast. Check them out. Zyax, Zyaxinstitute.com. And um, yeah, come on back, brother. Anytime, King. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you, King. Black Power. Peace. Black Power. All right. Rolling right along. If you just joining us, shout out to everybody in the chat. Man, I see a lot of my regulars in the house. Reality 914. 